You're back! Welcome. This week we're talking about the 2002 cult classic Morvern Caller by master filmmaker Lynn Ramsey based on the 1995 book by Alan Warner. I've never read the book because I'm so obsessed with the film I didn't want anything to influence or change the hold the film has over me, so pardon my ignorance in advance. Morvern Caller is in turn frustrating, defiantly silent, and emotionally violent. The great unsung actress Samantha Morton plays Morvern, an unintrospective supermarket clerk who wakes up Christmas morning to find her live-in boyfriend has committed suicide. All he left behind were Christmas presents, a leather jacket, a gold lighter, a Walkman, a passive-aggressive suicide note, a new mix CD he made for Morvern titled Music For You, and a novel he asked her to send off to some publishing companies. Upon watching the film for the first time, you would think that she would cry over his body or call the police, but instead she gets dressed up and goes out for a night on the town with her best friend Lana after taking some money from her dead boyfriend's pocket. When she returns from her night of partying, she replaces his name on the manuscript with her own, sends it off to some publishers, before going on what amounts to a psychological and spiritual walkabout in Spain. That's all I'm saying about the plot. The plot's not important. With her new mix CD and her best friend as companions, the film is about navigating Morvern's unique sensibilities and detached sense of reality. Within the same scene, you can bounce between thinking she's a sociopath, a genius, dull-witted, or the coolest cucumber that ever done been grown. Ramsey's framing is either painterly or immediate, handheld or remote, monochrome or hypersaturated. She shoots the movie like it's the inside of Morvern's oblique mind. There are shots of quiet and breathtaking beauty, followed by handheld moments of insane anxiety and intensity. You could pull out individual frames of this movie and sell them as photography. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Lynn Ramsey is one of the top five directors working today and here is a single frame to prove it. Ramsey's DP is the astounding Alwyn H. Kuchler, the German cinematographer who started his career as an assistant to a fashion photographer. He shot Ramsey's first feature, Rat Catcher, with her, but after Morvern Keller has yet to work with her again. His work on Danny Boyle's Sunshine and Joe Wright's Hannah is some of the most adventurous and idiosyncratic cinematography of the post-2000 era. I mentioned in my video for Donnie Darko that some of the films in this series would be more appealing to my direct and very bizarre sensibilities, and I think that Morvern Keller fits that bill nicely. There's very little resolution to Morvern's myriad of problems. Samantha Morton plays Morvern like an alien discovering human life for the first time, which could easily turn some viewers off if they're looking for someone to root for, and there's barely any dialogue or plot. By the end of the film, Morvern remains a cipher, completely arrested internally while living a life of perpetual motion, always moving forward. She exists in a world of beautiful nihilism, hoping to find some sense of connection. Her trip to Spain is about reinvention and release. Picture how Stella got her groove back, but Scottish, sad, and weird. You might not feel like you took anything from the film when it ends, but that's because the film took something from you. Ramsey wants you to feel as lost as Morvern does. Whether you do or not depends on how much of yourself you put into the film. You have to engage with the film and with Morvern in a way that won't make you feel comfortable. You have to make yourself the third wheel at a party that doesn't look fun, but still has really good music. Seriously, the mixtape her ex made for her has Velvet Underground, Aphex Twin, and Nancy Sinatra. The soundtrack for this is flawless. Morvern Caller is the definition of a cult classic. Myself and like 200 other people love this movie and even we're intimidated by it. Ramsey continues her cult career as a director with the Tilda Swinton gut churner we need to talk about Kevin and Joaquin Phoenix's brutal ballet, You Are Never Really Here. Ramsey's movies aren't fun, damn it, but they don't need to be. She does things with tone, texture, framing, and mood that no other filmmaker on the planet can replicate. Her work is art. It might be cult art, but it's art nonetheless. 
So I submit to you, good people of Bend Film, lovers of Tin Pan, and mavens of YouTube, Morvern Keller is my second selection for modern cult classics. I'll see you next week when we talk about Yorgos Lanthimos' 2015 surrealist black comedy, The Lobster. We'll talk to you then.